And I'll tell you guys since we're since we're all friends. Every character I write has a piece of me in them. Hi, I'm Lee Bardugo. You're listening to the Grisha Cast. Welcome to Grisha Cast, episode 70. In this episode, we will be discussing episode one from Netflix Shadow and Bone, A Searing Burst of Light. This is your host, Eric. And I'm Terry. From Nashville, Tennessee, this is your podcast for all things Grishaverse. A world created by the wonderful Lee Bardugo. Woo! <laughs> Moi casters! Hello, hello. Woo! Let's thank some listener cities. Let's do it. First, we have Waterlooville, England. Wow, thank you. That's such a fun name. That is. Absolutely, <laughs> it is. And then Torrance, California. Woo! So. Thank you, thank you. Mm-hmm. For those of you asking how you can help, we would greatly appreciate tips. A dollar does go a long way. Your tips will help us to continue to bring you the Grisha cast. You can Venmo a tip to at B-O-D-H-I-M-M. Or cash app dollar sign B-O-D-H-I-M-M. Also, leaving a review on your podcast platform, liking and following us on our socials, especially YouTube, would mean the world to us. And we now have Patreon. Woohoo! For those of you that want to support our podcast a little more and reap the rewards, each tier will receive a video from us and exclusive access to a new segment, Grisha Cast After, where we talk a little bit about the Grishaverse and a lot about being best friends. There are also tiers that grant you a co producer and even a co host status. Check us out at patreon.com forward slash GrishaCast or follow the link at GrishaCast.com. Woohoo! So at, exciting. That is. And this is exciting and also uncharted territory. Ooh. I know. So first off, thank you to all the new listeners that have watched Netflix Shadow and Bone and are tuning in. Yes. Thank you to all of our new listeners. We have broken our record, our all-time record this last week. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And especially thank you to all of the listeners that have been there from the beginning. The OGs! Go exactly. Where we started from the very beginning of the books and have made it very, very far. Yes. I so mean, instead of the original gangsters, they're the original Grisha. Oh, yes. Yes, the OGs, <laughs> y'all. Boom. <laughs> I am so corny and cheesy. They're fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so this is like uncharted territory because we are so used to having just this a specific setup yes. that we normally do for our podcast where like, I mean, we've got chapters and quotes and scenes and all that. And now here we are discussing yes. a TV show. I know. But how exciting is it that... We finally are here. I know. It seemed like so long, mm -hmm. but now mm -hmm. that we're here, it's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this happened so quickly. I'm not ready. Exactly. <laughs> and just for you newbies, um, we will just be discussing like each episode and not give spoilers to the other episodes, um, even though we did just have like a party last week of watching the entire season all at once. Yes, and we will be comparing it to the books, which could potentially give small spoilers. <laughs> so if you are, if you haven't read any of the books and you've just watched the show, one, you can go to Fable Ooh. and join a book club that we host yeah. and are starting Shadow and Bone. Or um, maybe start at episode one and mm -hmm. go all the way to here. I don't know. Or maybe just listen to the first couple episodes. So that way, and then you can listen to this. Ooh. It's up to you. <laughs> it's words. always up to you. You do what you want to do. And with that said, we're just explaining who knows what could happen with this <laughs> podcast because we have no clue where we're going, but we will <laughs> figure it out. Don't. All right. But, yeah. So. Anyways, it was a great episode. It was a gr like so exciting to see. Um, yes. 
Um, Eric got to witness me dancing <laughs> around the living room, jumping up and down while it was on because I wanted to be up close and see it up close. <laughs> and I was I was excited. Um, so he got to see that, <laughs> which probably um, was a little childish, but um, uh, very excited. I was you, very excited. You know, the more I think about it, you did look like a little kid watching TV. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Just sta- like standing in front of it. But I will mention this. She warned me that, like, I am not going to make it to watch the entire season. Yes. Like, there's no way I will make it. It's a long time. But I'm just going to let y'all know, she watched all of it. I did. I did watch all of it. It's hard. I got sleepy in the last last hour, but I made it. I never stay up that late anymore. I mean, gone are the days when we went to (laughs) the drag shows and stayed out till 6 a.m. in the morning. Or later, yeah. or earlier, however you want. <laughs> um, those days are are not with me. Um, that, so staying up till three was a struggle. Yeah, but it was worth it. It was absolutely worth it because we finally got to see what we had been talking about for so long, yes. and it was just it was amazing. It, was it really great. was. It was so well done. Yep. So. Um, so, I guess we should probably get started, huh? <laughs> um, yes, and we'll just say that um, there are um, storms or rain, so you might hear that. You mm. might hear me um, having an allergy issue. <laughs> yup. Eric might be a little tired because he's had a migraine. So we're just going to happily get through this as best we can, and um, we'll get through it because we're professionals. You know what? We'll say a little prayer. Compelled you. Oh my God. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having so much fun with our new little clips. <laughs> just negative energy be gone. Yeah. Uh, we just had so much fun last week at that party. We had to, we got to do a little skit. And, and you can see that skit on Patreon. Yeah. Ooh. And we just had so much fun and we love coming up with those things and yeah. we've got commercials and things like that. And we'll be adding those there too. Yes. So, uh, so okay. much fun. Yeah. And it's just amazing to know that the Grishaverse fandom is expanding. Yes. And it's, it's just awesome. And thank you so much also for all our fans on discord. Um, you guys are great and yeah, it's just, it's neat to know that we have people out there that we can talk to now fellow Grishaverse geeks exactly (laughs) yes for sure (laughs) because we definitely geek out oh quite a bit oh yes so episode one a searing burst of light which is very fitting Mm -hmm. um eric had told me that in the um, very beginning the little shadow and bone opening bits where it actually says shadow and bone changes each time Yep. So if you are binging and you go where Netflix like just keeps doing it, you're going to miss that. So you have to pause and go back. Um, so in the opening of this one, the shadow and bone come up and the O's are lit up like balls of light. Mm. And the whole thing lights up like a searing burst of light into the transition to the show. So that's what happened with this one. Yeah. And I just thought, I mean... They're so short, but like for us, people like us, we definitely will rewind and go back and see that. It's like Game of Thrones. Like you had to watch the opening credits because they changed with the episode. Oh my God. And I love, yeah. Oh my gosh. I I love that opening. (laughs) Like those were so much. That That was amazing. Just, I I love those openings. Those are so cool to watch. The music was amazing. The animation was amazing. How it changed and you could like pick out the, oh gosh, it just. That was cool stuff. So this is similar in Mm -hmm. that aspect. It's not as long and not as involved, but it goes along with the episodes. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a fun little thing. Yeah. So we started off, I mean, and it is, it was a very good episode, I thought. Yes, it was very good. But it starts off by showing us this like skiff, Mm -hmm. which is, looks pretty much just like a boat. Um, you can definitely see the Lansov emblem yeah. on the sail. It looks like a like a pirate ship almost. Mm-hmm. And it's destroyed. And Alina's talking about being afraid of the dark. And yeah. And then it shows her um, drawing in like she's in a she's 
in a wagon with yeah. some other people, and she's drawing something. So um, we learned that, well, first off, this wasn't in the books, but she no. is Shu. Yes, or she she really looks like Shu, because we don't, at this point in the book, we have no idea about her heritage, um, mm -hmm. and we don't even really know what she looks like all that much. We know that she's kind of, quote unquote, mousy. Yes. But the book says that she looks like Shu, which they say is the enemy. Yeah, which is just, that's different from the whole yes. story, because, I mean, she wasn't Shu in the books. But so. it's a great way to add oh, of course. Um, some um, some different backgrounds into the Grisha verse that we didn't have in the beginning. Absolutely. And I love, uh, I thought um, the actress that played her, I think she just does oh my gosh. an incredible yes. job. So, uh, so one thing that they like, so they're moving along and they hear these horrifying Volcra. Yes. That we know they're a Volcra. And yeah, they can hear it in the background. Because they're going towards the fold. And it starts getting dark in the wagon as they get yeah. closer. This darkness comes in, which is terrifying. I can't even imagine just, like, camping out. Like, yeah, right there. Oh, weird. Yeah, definitely. It's got this quick little um, cut to Alina's past and um, being in an orphanage. And... Um, Anakuya. Yeah. I don't think they ever say Anakuya's name, though. I don't think they do. <laughs> but we know that that's who she is. Yes. And she's looking at a map, and she's looking at the fold on the map. And mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting information because, I mean, we find out that, I mean, because the fold is pretty much going all the way through Ravka. So they can't get across it without going into other, like, enemy territory. And that's what we learn. Yeah, because she asked, well, why can't you just go around it? Mm -hmm. And Anakuya's like, look at the map, ding dong. We can't because the people to the north and the south of us hate us. Exactly. So, And then we just... get that little fun quote, which I don't know why. It was just so interesting to me, where it's like, pick up your pencil or someone will put a rifle in it, like or put a rifle in your hands. Yeah. I... That kind of gives us the backstory that like everybody at war is, is having to fight. I think it's a really good line, too, because, I mean, it, it it definitely goes well with the story because, I mean, Ravka has been at war for a very mm -hmm. long, long time. And um, in the book, however, like, I mean, she's like, well, I guess she's not really learning about the Volk right now. She's just talking about, like, the fold. Um, but I just remember specifically in the book how, like, She's she's with Mal and they're looking through this book and they see a picture of a yeah. Volcra and um, it scares her. It scares them, so they have to like shut they it. They just and, shut it. Yeah. Yep. But it's also different in the book too because she's not like coming in on a rifle on a on a wagon. She's walking down a road. Yeah, called the Vi. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's one several differences right there in the very very beginning. Yeah, definitely. So. Then we're at the fold. Yeah, we go back to the fold, <laughs> which is our first real look at it. Which is really cool for us, like, Grishaverse fans yes. that have been reading this since 2012 because those have just been images in our head. Yes. For so long. And, and it's also hard to, like, really picture what we're talking about because, like, when you just, just darkness. Yeah, it's just this... um it's a it's a strip of land yeah. that is completely dark like nighttime yeah That's it. and so the way that they did it in there where it's just this literal wall amazing is it just makes so much sense yeah definitely and then we get some banter here where they're heading into camp and um they're they're talking about the fold and the commander of the or the commander the general whatever she is that mm. is um like in charge of the cartographers um she actually um says don't you go to church and the, they say this the, yeah. the saints will provide a sun summoner to destroy it which i know eric probably geeked out on that one because he loves that kind of thing but yeah. it's, it's cool to know that like they actually go to church to learn those things <laughs> well yeah and like that it was uh something that had been said mm -hmm. like so i think that's different from the book like i mean i because I feel like in the book, they talk about the saints, but I really don't think, at least we haven't gotten there yet, that there ever was like a premonition of 
a sun summoner coming around and destroying the fold because I don't think there right. was a sun summoner. Like I think that was after <clears throat> the fact that yeah. they were like, oh yeah, there was like there's supposed to be a sun summoner. We don't get that information as early mm. as we did in the show. Right. Which was kind of cool because like you're you're looking at this thing and they're like, hey, the saints are supposed to send a sun summoner. <laughs> yeah. So it, that's kind of cool. Yep. So we then go back to the orphanage. We see Mal and um, Mal's just a little boy and he's saving a bunny. Oh. Aww. Alina threatens to uh, stab the boy mocking Mal. He hides from Anna Kuya, who says he is a boy who hides from a fight. <laughs> Which I think was brilliant because yeah. she's like, I guess you could hide forever, but this is who you've become now. And it instantly cuts back into present time with Mal literally in a fight. Yep. <laughs> he like Which we don't see early in the books either. No. That comes in a little later. Um, but we see Mal like actually fighting. Um, and he's fighting, I don't know, this big guy. And of course he wins and everybody wins money because they're betting on him. But then the summoner comes up, a you know he's in his blue kefta, and he's like, "I'll fight you." <laughs> yeah, and he pushes, he, he st <laughs> stirs up the dirt. Yes. <laughs> and um, at this point, his friends stop him because in the show world, they say that they'll put him in jail or they'll put him in prison or he'll get in like serious trouble nah. for fighting a Grisha, which I don't think is a thing in the book, but um, but it is in the TV show world. So he doesn't actually fight him. But the summoner is like, what, are you scared of some air? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, I am. <laughs> Absolutely. I can see, I've seen what you can do with that air. Um, yes. And I'm pretty sure that that, is that the first time in the show that we saw Grisha? I think it is. So I'm sure that our people that just happened to click on Netflix and saw, hey, Shadow and Bone, new show, let's watch it. We're like, what? Why is this guy pushing dirt around? <laughs> and they don't really explain the Grisha. They don't. I Like I was telling Eric earlier, I had lots of people in my news feed on Facebook, because I'm old, um, saying, I'm asking everyone, have you watched Shadow and Bone? Please explain it to me because I'm confused. Um, because I guess people who haven't read the book, it's very confusing to them. So I'm hoping that our fable... Yes. Um, read along will help because we have some explanation like videos. Um, but yeah, I could see how it would be confusing. But I don't know if we ever really get. I mean, we in the beginning of the book, we get the list. Right. But you don't know what they are. But I don't even think when you read the book, you get a big explanation in the beginning. It comes in pieces. It does. Lee's writing is the kind where like you have to keep going to understand what's happening. She doesn't give you a ton of like build up right action happens and you just kind of follow along with it and learn as you go so for those of you that have just watched the show and haven't read the books just keep watching yeah it might be confusing in the first episode but if we're since we're following lee's writing it's gonna it's the same kind of thing you have to keep watching and putting puzzle pieces together like we did yeah with the books <laughs> pretty much just um realize grisha practice something called the small science yes. and it's they wouldn't want us calling it magic, no. but it is power. And they do say magic in the show. Yes. So, and during this fight scene. Right. It's just so. But that's offensive in mm. the book to mm. say magic. Because I think um in or, the book they say, is it magic that your like a cut will heal itself? Yeah. And things like that. So like that's the same kind of science that they use. Well, yeah, it's it's science. It's it has an actual like science to it. It's not just they're Mayor using... Zost. Exactly. <laughs> and I think because I think Mayor Zost is like magic. Yes. Like that's because I mean, the Grisha study the small science, which is like pretty much using things that are there. Just put like anyways. Yeah. You'll find out more. We're just on <laughs> the first five minutes of the show. I know. <laughs> so what else goes on? So Mal, after he um, runs away from the summoner, he meets back up with Alina. And at this point, we can start seeing their connection because Alina gets a big smile on her face and Mal gets a big smile on his face. Um, so we, we know that there's something between them. We learn that everyone is getting their assignments. 
Um, Grisha, there's Grisha practicing um, in the camp. We see um, the Inferni practicing the fire and the summoners putting it out. And again, and that's our really first look at Zoya. Yes. But we don't know it's Zoya at the time, but like us book readers know that it's Zoya. Yep. Um, So in the show, (laughs) um, Mal and Alina express not liking the Grisha. They talk about how that they think that they're better than everyone and like all these are that is th- something that didn't happen in the book. No. It, in the book, there are people that do say something about the Grisha at this point, but Mal and Alina correct them and they stick up for the Grisha. Yeah, because in the very beginning, if you are found to be a Grisha, then you're in Ravka. That's a it's an amazing thing. It's yes. an honor. Your you are, family is going to be well off now because yeah. yeah. You get you go learn about it, and then your family keeps on getting a stipend every month. And they fight for the king. So it's, I don't know. It's weird. It's But, it, hey, it's a show, and they had to, like, change some things around. Yeah. And, of course, they're going to to make the story interesting for everybody. And they did, definitely. So I they, that was cool. they walk by um, another pirate ship-looking thing, <laughs> um, which is a skiff. And Mao says it is called an ultralight. It's a new thing. Ew. It's Grisha made. Fancy. <laughs> so it's supposed to like hold up better than the past skiffs who have that have not made it. Apparently the last skiff that went out did not make it. Well, yeah. Yes. Because I mean, we know more about the fold. I mean yes. going into the fold, you're it's like rolling dice, whether you're gonna make it out or not. Yes. It's just it's, and this is also where we meet Dubrov and Michael. Yeah. Which in the books, Mikkel, Michael, Mikkel, I don't know, and Dubrov and Alina, they already know each other. Like they yeah. banter in the book. But in the show, we're just meeting them, which makes sense because you have to introduce them. Exactly. So that makes sense. And then we um, go to the assignments, which looks a lot like Hunger Games where they're pulling you know, names out. But at this, it's cool where they are because you can see all these posters. Oh, that was right for that, that are like, out. I know that are in like the made up Rothkin yes. language. That is super cool. So cool. Um, also, again, the difference in the book is that Alina knows that she's going. She's already. Yeah, she, she was planning on Mal going on and this Alina book. are going together across the fold. That's already established in the book. But at this point. Um, they say we're going to go to Novo Krabirsk for food since there's a food shortage. Yeah. So that's, a, that's interesting. Too. That's another change. That's why they're going across. And so they're just doing this lottery to like, who's going <laughs> because they need help. Yes. Bringing some of the stuff back. And Mal's name, of course, gets chosen, uh, like second. And yeah. he kind of makes a joke about it, even though Alina's like, oh my God. He kind of makes a joke, and he's like, well, if it does work, I'll get to visit Ketterdam. Yes. And what do we do at that point? <laughs> we cut straight to Ketterdam. And that shot, I oh love, just because it's so cool to see, like, as if you're just, like, on an airplane. I know they don't have airplanes it in is, the Grishaverse, but it was just amazing to see that. Such, it, oh, my gosh. It And it's such a different world like when they pull up Ketterdam yeah from Ravka it's such a different world it looks more dirty London oh Amsterdam it's, it's just, just it looked great <laughs> so cool um but we get to go to the crow club yay and this is where we meet Jesper who <laughs> was cast beautifully out of everyone oh, yes. in the entire cast they were all cast great but everyone in the entire cast his was like perfection Absolutely. Absolute perfection. Yeah. Um, they're betting at a table, and a guy has some Kruger or some. Yeah, I mean, I. Krug, yeah. Krug. I think it oh, depends no, on your well, accent. I don't know if it was Kruger. I think it was Zimini money. Yeah, because they're talking about it being fake. So yes. Zimini, yeah, he's saying. Jesper said if it's real, uh, it a can take a bullet. Gonna pop, is going to like ping off of it. Right. But if it's not, then the bullet will go through it. And of course. He shows off his skills by throwing mm-hmm. the coin in the air and shooting it, and it shoots straight through. So it's counterfeit. So that's fake. It's fake. And that ain't going to work in it's the Crow not. Club. We, so, it was so cool, though. It was. <laughs> so now 
let's make it to our first little show. Uh, so real quickly, for those podcasters um, that are just listening, we are going to play clips. So if you wanted to see it, go to YouTube. Um, they will be on YouTube. Um, you should be able to hear it. Yeah, exactly. But, but if you want to actually see it, then. They're just little short little clips because this is an introduction to a very important character. Oh, yes. So, Christopher, producer, please, if you pl please, we'll play clip one. No loud noises at the table, Jasper. Scare off the pigeons. Good one, Lucas. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> so, that's the first time we see Kaz. Yes. Who? Yes. Uh. I know a lot of people out there were flipping out over that. <laughs> Including me. <laughs> yeah. It was great. You see, I mean, just because, I mean, the first thing you see is the cane. Uh-huh. And then it just, oh. And you can kind of see between, like, in that scene, you can see, um, you know, that Kaz is boss, like, how their interactions go. So. Yeah. Woo. Yep. So from there, we meet Roddy. Yeah, which was weird for me. It uh, is kind of weird, but um, but it was exciting because I'm like, I know that name. Yeah, absolutely. He tells Kaz that someone stole a painting. <laughs> he yeah, shows him the picture, <laughs> and it's like a picture of a fold, uh, but it's like an it's like an oil, like the fold on oil. <laughs> and they call it the same. But it's by the same artist that they use in the books for like Six of Crows, like a decapole or something. Yes. And I just thought that was so interesting. And they said, I wouldn't know because it's not a nude. <laughs> right. So <laughs> that you can see Kaz walking up to his office, which is just like the books, because Kaz's office is upstairs from the Crow Club. So mm -hmm. that was cool. Um, but as he's walking through the office, he has the painting <laughs> on yeah. his wall. <laughs> I love it. It was so cool. Well, because they were talking about how Roddy was saying that it had to take someone with like a lot of skill and it had to be this huge team because there was like <laughs> Grisha made steel and all these things that they yeah. had to get through. And like, here's this <laughs> painting on the wall. <laughs> yeah, that was that was perfect. Oh, also, for those who haven't read the books, this is not in the book at all. Exactly. This is all this is new, new to. Yes. It's new for all of us. It so, is. so that's what's really exciting for all of us Grisha verse fans um, because we have read them in Six of Crows, but this is like before that. It's like a prequel. So all this story is like... In, yeah, anything in Ketterdam. Yeah, with these... They're considered the crows. Yes. You'll see. Um, and it's just... It's a new story. It's awesome. It's brilliantly put together. So It really is. So uh, so in the books, we we always know that Kaz has gloves on. Yeah. Um. He doesn't show anyone his gloves. So he's going up to the washroom and he starts taking his gloves off. And for a second, you're like, am what? I going to see his hands? Oh, my God. I'm going to see his hands this early. Nope. Uh -uh. Brilliantly. Like, this is one of those things that, like, you know, the people are, like, doing this with integrity because the camera pans up so that we can't even see his hands. Oh, of course. <laughs> it's amazing. Excuse me. I need to grab my teapot. Go, girl. Um, so Inez shows up at this point, looking fabulous, and tells him about this Dreesen guy who is looking for a crew to cross the fold and bring something back for one million Kruga. And that's all we know at this point. And yeah, and we're going to have to t remember to talk about that later because yes. I just, I was wondering, so like if this whole thing got set up, this must be at a different time than what we're watching with the other story? I think it's happening... After? Yes. It has to. Yes. It's just like, okay. It's just how they... It's put just it how they put it together so that at the end, everything can come together. So this next clip, producer, um, is, is just... Um, it's clip two, uh, but I really like it because it shows us... Let's watch it. So, um, producer... Um, Kaz, I got this lead from one of the girls at the menagerie. They tell me things in case you would buy them out, like you did with me. I didn't buy you. I'm paying off your indenture. You know what I mean. This one girl, Cash, she has skills. She's like me. I only invest in the one of a kind. She isn't like you. No one is. Uh, 
Okay. Amazing. And the reason I put that in there is just because it's so different from the books where in the books we are like sitting there waiting for Kaz and Inej to like get together and like talk or like Kaz show emotion. So I thought that was really amazing because it was just, it was him being vulnerable to her early on in the story and just. Yeah, we can. In the Six of Crows, we start to pick up on the fact that they do have something going on because he stares right. at the window waiting for her. And so we get a few of those things. So to get that early, I think, is a good thing because that gives the show reader or the show watchers, they know that and there's something there. And it, but he like, until it just, that's a huge thing for like, I mean, for Kaz to like verbally say that too. You know, I mean, just like, I mean, no one is. Yeah. That, that, He's, that's a very Kaz line because he always put, gives it about like a business. Like I only invest in one of a kinds. He never says anything really about his emotions. It's always like a right. business <laughs> thing. Which is true. So we, that's what we get from Kaz. Yeah. Then we, um, screen, we go, re- we go back to Ravka real quickly and we're in a dinner line mm-hmm. and, um, Pretty much, Alina's just trying to get food and <laughs> get her uh, gruel. Yeah, the 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 chef, the person that's serving the food, decides. Like, I mean, he says no because of the way she looks and I, for her being shoe. So, like, she doesn't get food, mm-hmm. and that really upset me because, like, gosh, these Rovkins are really racist towards that. <laughs> like, I mean, like, it's just. I don't know. I I felt like through the entire like Grisha verse books, like it's Ravka who is trying so hard to like just have peace with everybody, and then we've got like this strong tension in this show that there's definitely just ugh. Yes. So something to bring up. Yeah. Yeah. So she doesn't get food, but um, Mal of Mal's cool. on the case. Yeah, so of course he's there to save the day. So he ventures off to a tent. Um, and I guess because he, he knows that it's a, a Grisha uh-huh. tent and um, they've got, you know, monies and stuff like that. And, um, anyways, this is where our next clip is. So, clip three, plus, please. get arrested for that. Stealing from Second Army will get you thrown in a hole. Maybe you should arrest me. Hang on. Aren't you one of our escorts for the crossing? That's right. Well, I don't mind sharing. That's not a fault, mate. It's for a friend. Some of it's for me. What's your name? I'm Mal. I'm a tracker. Zoya. I'm a schooler. When I get nerves the night before, I like to have a good tumble with a stranger. Clears my head. That's my remedy. I should go. You don't seem like the type who does what they should. Cool. So in the book, book, mm-hmm. Zoya is coming in in a blue carriage behind the Darkling's carriage. Yeah. And she stares down Mal. Yeah, she's, our, <laughs> she's I mean, thirsty for Mal. She is. As she just sees him passing by. And Alina is actually mm-hmm. upset. Mm-hmm. She's she's jealous because this beautiful woman yep. is eyeballing Mal. So there was a lot in that scene. Yes. Um, one, did you hear how crisp that grape was that he ate? I know, I'm sorry. It was like, like ASMR. I just it was just like 
you heard this like pop, cr- pop and I was like, dang. I know. That's that juicy. is that like just got picked. I mean, that is a fresh fruit right there. Um and we're supposed to have a food shortage. Come on. Right. And these Grisha are just like but what was really cool, um, for those of us that have read the books, like we know that Grisha have amplifiers, and at the very last part of that, when she summoned the wind to blow out that flame, you saw her mm-hmm. amplifier. Yep. And it was just this thing on her wrist, which, oh my God, <laughs> was just very different because I'm not even going to get, I'm not even going to talk about it, but just like the way they do amplifiers in the show is very different from the books. <laughs> the books, they're more like jewelry at least. Yeah, we will, um, uh, woo, yes. But if you actually looked, I mean, this was, it was kind of like a piercing, I guess, on her wrist. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, but that was crazy to see. Um, I When I watched that with my partner, <laughs> he literally looked at me and said, what does, what is it? What's a tumble? Oh, wow. <laughs> and I think I stared at him for like 20 minutes. <laughs> Do you show him that last episode yet? Lord. No, he's only seen the Parts first. Of it. He's only seen the first episode. But <laughs> oh wow! I'm like, what do you mean? What's a tumble? <laughs> Weird. Woo! What do you think? Like a tumbleweed or something? Uh, no, I'm like, they're doing gymnastics, babe. Yeah. Let's go do some gymnastics and cheerleading. That's yeah. what she wants to do with a stranger. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. So Mal <laughs> goes to give Alina the food. They sit. if he hasn't eaten at all, <laughs> because know. apparently he was just like enjoying those grapes, Cause crispy. Because he's like, some of it's for me. Mm-hmm. Um, they sit in a tower at night and stare at the fold. All right. <laughs> Which, I mean, like, I understand because, I mean. It's the only entertainment you got, I guess, really. Well, yeah, there's lightning in your, it. You can't pull out your iPad and watch TikToks. You have no, to stare at not. the fold. <laughs> yeah, just stare at the fold. <laughs> um, she looks at him and says, don't go. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. could shoot you in the foot. He says, she's a terrible shot. And that he promises that he's going to come back. But first, he's going to gamble in Ketterdam. Yeah, I love that Mal's dream vacation is just like <laughs> going to Ketterdam. It's just like, I mean, that's, go to the Club. that's what he wants to do. Which makes a lot of sense when you think of Ravka's country and what Ketterdam is. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, Ketterdam really is like one of those places that a lot of people, There are people that live there, but it's a vacation place. A lot of people go there to have fun, you know? Yeah. I mean, we've heard the commercial before about vacationing in Ketterdam. Oh, absolutely. Gosh. (laughs) So much to do there. So many clays to put on and just relax. Yeah. So that takes us back to Ketterdam. Mm -hmm. And the crows are trying to question folk, like, I don't know, street people, fighter people. I don't know. About how to get through the fold. And that takes us to our next scene. Yeah, which is clip four, please. Which is very exciting for us. Ah! Because we're crazy. So, producer. He's what I don't care. We're going to be here all night. Rude. Why haven't they tried going under Dig a tunnel. Tried that more than a century ago. Something heard them digging. <gasps> so it was made hundreds of years ago by that crazy Grisha. The black character. Yeah, the one who controls Shadow, right? They got one in their army now, don't they? General Kirigan. Your point? What if one of his kind made it? Can't he unmake it? Have you ever put out fire by adding more fire? Then what's the opposite of this? A sun summoner. Right, well, then one of those doesn't exist. Doesn't exist yet. Ooh. Something heard them digging. Oh Who my could that god. Be? It has to be our isn't rude. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> like that has to be it, right? It has to be. Although, like, <laughs> we and only our followers are probably the <laughs> only ones that thought that. Because that is something that I have in my notes for the next time we talk to uh Miss Bardugo is please tell me that that's what they meant. <laughs> Oh, it has to. Oh my God! Imagine like it has to be. Even uh, though, but then like, think about it logically. 
Isamrud is mentioned how many times in the entire Grisha verse? I know. Once. Yeah. One time. Yeah. <laughs> in one little chapter. So we also get in there that Inej believes in the saints. Um, yes. Because they said uh, some sun summoner, and she's like, there's not a sun summoner yet. So she is clearly so in the church. There's a prophecy, definitely, yes. of somebody like coming and being able to clear up the fold and they talk about how the black heretic made the fold right and then they say don't they have one in their army so it's a different they think that it's a different yes darkling um and then roddy of course is it i don't think it's roddy this time another one of his goons um comes in and he's like i just got word that dreesen like sent out Things to all these people saying that he needs a heart render before midnight and that he's taking bids for that one million Kruger job. Hmm. Kaz decides that um, if he could provide the heart render, then he would have the exclusive on the deal. Yes. And he also hears that Pekka Rollins knows of the job. But if you're just watching the show, that's just a name. It's just a name. It's so. a much bigger name. In the books. Yep. Um, and that's where we cut to Pekka Rollins. And let me tell you, it is not how I pictured him. No. At all. Uh-uh. I didn't picture him with a really thick Irish accent. <laughs> I didn't picture him that thin. Yeah, I, exactly. Although. He's uh, like, I don't know, he's younger and thinner than. I expected him to be this huge, massive guy. Yeah. Built. I ju- <sighs> but he's still like, I mean, portrayed still the character. Scary. Yeah, he did good. But it's just, I don't know, it was interesting. I Because it took me actually the second time around to realize that it was Becca Rollins. <laughs> the I did the same thing. The first time around, I was like, huh, who's that guy? Um, but then the second time around, all right, that's Pekka. It's weird. So um, he actually beats the living heck out of somebody, um, hoping to get access to the heart render that's at the Orchid Club next door. So just to let you guys know, I mean, like, obviously, I mean, there's... There's a lot of people trying to get this job. There's not a lot of Grisha in Ketterdam, which they don't explain at this point in the show. But um, being a Grisha in Ketterdam isn't like a big popular thing. And they're not all that popular. People are a little scared of them. Um, so there's not that many Grisha in Ketterdam. So there won't be a ton of heart renders right. for Pekka Rollins to choose from. Yes. So he has to go beat up this person <laughs> to try to get um, to the heart render. That's and that is... It. We instantly go right back to Ravka. <laughs> mm-hmm. And this is um, where we see the Darkling's coach for the first time. It's this black, fancy coach with these fancy black horses. And everyone comes out to see it. Mm-hmm. And they call him... General Kerrigan. Yeah, so... A little different. It is. But so, that's okay. Yep. Um, Alexi, at this point, clearly... <laughs> Clearly likes Alina um, because Mal says that he's going to come back after he does his thing. And Alexi's like, I'll just be right here. Yes. Yeah, so, the whole uh, time. So that's what I am. Um, this next clip, which is clip five producer. Um, I'm sorry. It's um, Alexi. Is. Um, well, let's just see that real quickly. Back before you know. And I'll be here the whole time. Huh. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, so He clearly likes her. I thought that was hilarious. It is. When I hear when he's just like, and I'll just be here the whole time. Yes. I think again, She didn't even hear that. I know. <laughs> yeah, no, she was already formulating a plan in her head um while he was talking. But like in the books, that's not a thing. Um, no. but I know as things go on, why they did that. Like they, hmm. yes. Okay. Because well, it's it's a, when you get there. Yeah. Cause it's a bigger deal later on. But the reason why she didn't hear him is because she is forming yeah. a plan. She's thinking, um, she thinks back to the time in the orphanage, actually out in the meadow. Yeah. Because they apparently run out to the meadow a lot. Um, and she goes and she starts burning important maps, which again, took me. A little bit to figure out what she's what she was doing, but she's burning important maps so that they would need her 
to go on this thing. Um, it works. Exactly. But she- now the whole unit has to go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's going to take us to our next clip, which is clip six. Um, and they are already on the skiff, and Mal is upset that she is, she's gotten herself into this situation. So let's see that. I can shoot you in the foot. I like my feet. Thank you. Tell him you're too sick to go. I'm never that sick. Lie if you have to. And what's your lie? I'm with you. Get off this boat now or I'll carry you off. Raise the gates! Okay, so... Too late. She can't get off. She can't. <laughs> and anyways, yeah, so there's things that I thought but Terry might think differently. I thought that that line of her saying, I'm never too sick is definitely talking about how she's been sick before and she's been pretty sick. Um, To me, I got that as an Easter egg for uh, some fans that have read the stories. Yeah, Um, they could be saying that she is sickly. Right. But she's never been that sick. So, and I don't know if we want to explain. No, we don't. Okay. All right. So moving on, (laughs) let's just put that, put a pin in it. Yep. So (laughs) anyways, time's up. You go, everybody on that skiff, you go in. Yep. So now we're going to take it right over. So, um, skip, um, clip seven, I call it, um, our skiff stewardess (laughs) because (laughs) she pretty much is just going to be like, Hey, okay. Let me explain what's about to go on. Uh So let's play that clip real quick. Here's how it goes. We go into the fold. It gets dark, but we like it dark. That keeps us from drawing attention. That's how we travel. The only light we use is the blue one at the mast. It's weak, but safe. But you're an inferno, right? So why are you here if we're supposed to keep things dark? But when the dark comes to keep you. Boom. And all your exits are on the left and the right. <laughs> of the, it's, And... So she is beautiful, by the way. She yes. is absolutely gorgeous. And it was so funny that as my partner and I were watching that, that was the first thing he said to as she comes in. He goes, wow. And I was like, yes, exactly. She's beautiful. And sorry, we will not be serving beverages on this trip. No, no. So. <laughs> so it does explain that we need everything to be dark. Yep. Um. And so, um. and we know the Volcra are there because, I mean, that was in the beginning yeah, when they talk about there's it, something. Yeah. Well, and like there's something that eats mm-hmm. you when you go in there. So, so yeah. as they're as they go off, um, the Grisha summoners blow air into the sails. Alina is obviously visibly concerned. Why wouldn't she be? And she loses her scarf. Uh oh, yeah. which is kind of cool because we talked about um, with well, the trailer that it's her colors. It's her colors, but also I felt like it was um, for for me. Maybe it was like this, like sign of like you know that scarf is going back, and then because when she goes back, like this is the last time she's going to be who she is. Right. It might have been like letting go. Yeah. Yeah. Because symbolism. Because things are about to happen when you get onto that phone. And so here is where we have General Kerrigan watching with his cape flowing. He's watching the skiff go in the fold, and I think I held my breath. Just like Alina holds her breath as they enter. Yes. Um, And what was cool, too, is after they actually get into the darkness, everything just, like, goes quiet. There's no wind. There's no everything. Like, everyone's hair, like, falls. Everything just kind of goes quiet. They pass one marker, and she asks how many markers to go, and they say 37. So there are 38 markers that you have to get through. In this dark, scary place, which is a really long time. Yeah, and there's like, I mean, you see like broken down, like yes. attacked, like um, skiffs. Oh. And I mean, <laughs> who is the poor guy that had to go put the markers out? I know. <laughs> Lord. Um, we also see at this point, um, it was right before they leave. I didn't put this in my notes, but it just came to me and it might be important later. The uh, guy that's um, that's also like the tour guide where he's like, everybody hold still. Um, he actually has marks on his arm. He's been through three times, and he oh, marks on his arm each time he went through. So that is showing that that's a thing because he tells Mal he's going to get his first one. So apparently, you mark on your arm when you get to go through. So if you survive, yes, you, you get to like you cut get yourself. to cut your arm. Um, Fan- fantastic. So, <laughs> so they get to the second marker when disaster strikes. Yeah. So now we've got um. So 
they get attacked by Volcra, and we're not playing the entire scene. Uh, the attack scene is really great. The whole, I mean, I just thought it was... Graphic. It is. Um, but we're just going to play kind of like the last part of it. So um, this is our last clip, please. So that <laughs> so those that aren't watching on YouTube, that is um, the Volker attack. It takes out a lot of the crew. Yeah, uh, Lexi pieces out. He just jumps off. He's like, uh, uh-uh, uh, see ya. Yep. Um, and, and then our he's stewardess gone. was like, I'm our sorry, stewardess that was is gone when she got picked up. Like that really, like I don't know. I didn't like the way, like I mean, she was like, come out, like you coward, <laughs> you coward. And then she gets swooped up, and not only like it doesn't just like fly off, it like leaves her like on the deck for a second to her like her limp grip. body <laughs> and then flies off I know. it was very graphic and I'm, I'm gosh I know I was actually really sad because I was like I like that sassy lady I know I hope her family gets her like trip points. <laughs> I know um so it takes off the um it also takes out the person who's in charge of the cartographers like it takes out everyone yeah um and then obviously it goes to grab Mal Mal's in the air trying to stab it she shoots the Volcra, it lets him go, which he said she wasn't a good shot, but she shot it. And then um, she goes to whatever. And then um, he says, I'll see you in the meadow. And then the Volcra grabs her. And then she turns into a big ball of Well, light. we don't know. Like, I mean, it just, it stops. And yeah. then we go. We just cut straight to Nova Krabirsk. <laughs> exactly. So that is where we see. This other town called Novo Krabirsk, which is on the other side of Ravka. West Ravka. And they were expecting this gift to come. And they're like, hey, two like, hours late, yes, not sure coming. Right. So um, all of a sudden, you see a man running out of the fold, and it's Alexi. Yep. So He's all beaten up and bloody. Yeah. And so, he just kind of passes out. Yep. Then we go to Ketterdam, and like... <laughs> so we, we don't know anything. <laughs> yeah, it. there's a lot of stuff that just goes on. But um, they're cleaning up, like, in Ketterdam, cleaning up Pekka's, um, I guess he, like, had just killed somebody yeah, or something. Yeah, they're mopping up the blood. Yep. But news that the heart render um, that they were looking for, I guess her name is Lana, mm-hmm. um, is missing. Um, someone else has got her. So that's a real quick cut to <laughs> our crows. Ha, 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 because <laughs> they got her. Yep, because Kaz got her. So take her to see Dreesen says um, she'll do the thing if he can have an exclusive on the job. So the heart render is asked to get answers from Alexi because apparently um, Alexi is having a hard time remembering. Uh, Dreesen says he's probably horrified, too. I mean, he oh, had, he's he's terrified. He's like got post-traumatic he saw, tre- stress syndrome. He saw everybody get killed and then he had to make it through the rest. And re- that had to happen early. He had so he run, had to like walk. Yes, he had to run through. Yeah, because he didn't think. Well, he probably didn't know. I, yeah, it had been shorter to go the other way. So he just, but hey. he just kept on going. Um, but Dreesen says there was a device that was detonated when the Volker swarmed that lit the dark like a forest fire quote an invention no one had seen before 
end quote. So that's all we know is yeah. that this like thing went off that nobody knows what it is. Um, and it shows at this point, it shows Alina and Mal that are like, they're laying on the skiff. It looks like they're dead. Um, and if you look, there's this really cool scorch mark from yeah. their bodies. It that, looks really cool. It does. It was a great little thing that they put in there. Yes. Um, it says Alexi can't articulate. Uh, the healer comes up and lowers his heart rate and makes him all nice and calm. So that's one part real quickly. Like, I mean, I never really thought of a healer doing I mean, She's I know they can render. lower heart, but I mean, like, I just like, it was, I, I know they can do that, but I never thought about them using them in, in interrogating someone and trying to like calm them down to get the truth Well, if out you of remember, sorry, if you remember when we met Nina for the first time in the books, that's what she was doing in the clubs is that she wasn't, she was in one of the oh, pleasure houses, right. but she was seeing people as kind of like a therapist where she would slow their heart rates down and make them drowsy kind drowsy of drowsy and makes peaceful them... and happier um so i think it just you know if you're super anxious and you have this person that can like lower your heart rate and calm you down it might help you remember yeah. things um organic valium yes thank you can i please have some mm. um he says it was a sun summoner and that is just clearly like <gasps> Whoa. yeah because and then he actually names her which if you go back to where he clearly likes her, this is a huge deal. The fact that he's like calling her out, but he does say, but he doesn't know what they're going to do. He's Well, yes. And he says, if I tell you who it is, will you set me free? And mm -hmm. of course, Dreesen is like, yep, sure, dude. Will. And he's like, Alina. And Star then Dreesen's like, pop in the head, dead. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then he says, um, he's got a ship that's going to sail at dawn. If you can prove a way through the fold, he will send the crows on it with an advance. If not, he'll give it to Pekka Rollins. And Kaz's face is clearly like, oh, heck no. <laughs> and yep. so he says that he'll do it. Yep. For, for one million Krug. Yep. And Kruga. Dreesen's like, the prize is one million Kruga. And then it just, it's done. It's in. That's the end of the episode. <laughs> so, um, which is cool. So, I guess um, it's that special time for Grish cast news <laughs> do we not say that anymore you can say it okay i missed it. you just forgot uh yes okay because <laughs> i felt like i was like in a daydream or something i was like do we not do that anymore do we like cut that part out <laughs> sorry hi alex hi grisha uh, out in the field Yes. Hello, hello. Yeah, so every new listener, this is Alex, who brings us our Grishaverse news. So tell us, what's going on? We actually have a lot this week. Again, as everyone knows, the show is out. It released after our episode came out last week. Um, we have a new website. It's called Beyond the Fold. It is NetflixShadowandBone.com. There's a bunch you can do on there. You can create your own Grisha avatar. They have a What Crow Are You game. You have a Grisha verse map, and you can find out what part of the Ravkin army you are. It is a lot of fun, cool. and you definitely volume up for that. You get to have a little extra experience with that. Um, we got loads of behind-the-scenes videos and pictures from the cast. If you want all the good stuff, I say follow the guy who plays... Fed your. Oh. Good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Shadow and Bone Socials have had a few uh, cast games posted. Uh, Castmates are best mates, and one asking which Grisha they will be. Cool. The after party was released. So it's like games and stuff with the cast on Netflix. Um, they have the Ravkin alphabet released. So it's what? basically the. <laughs> the american alphabet <laughs> to the ralphkin it is very cool oh my god that's like <laughs> what i've been waiting for <laughs> she just lit herself over you here just... where'd you say that was <laughs> um i think it's on the website but i'm not sure i just happened to see a post with it okay no yes. taken Thank you. Sorry. Oh. Didn't mean to scare you. Shadow and Bone icons are now available on Netflix, so you can have Taz, Alina, Jesper, Inej, the Kane, and the Stag 
for your Netflix icon. Cool. Yeah. See, this it's is what I have. Oh. I have all the- um, you can now get gifts like the little moving pictures on Snapchat and Instagram for your stories. The first episode of the Into the Grishaverse behind the scenes podcast has been released yesterday. Um, and the RSVPs for the virtual meet and greet have been sent out. With that, it looks like they send you a Zoom link and you got to hope for fast internet because it's a first come first serve and we know how fast the <laughs> fandom is. So, Wow, that is a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Well, that was a lot. I just like, I mean, I, I can't stop thinking about how I'm going to spell my name and what it's going to look like. Yeah. I figured you were still there. Yeah, I know. But that's why we have Alex. Um, I did. I I didn't know that at all. Oh, so that's awesome. So thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely. So I guess we'll see you back next week, Alex. Absolutely. Have a good one. You too. That was incredible. <laughs> yes, I, I made a note Gee, so that um, you can. <laughs> Alex knows so much more than I do. I think I, I think what happened is I took like a break, I from like social media and stuff like that, just because oh. we've been working so hard, you know, like doing everything. Like I guess. Yeah, there are so many pictures out there, so many videos. Um, so yeah, there's there's definitely a lot. I think because they were holding back. A lot until the show came out, and then now they're releasing all these extra things. So, but the, um, it's a lot. And the Netflix icon thing, yes, that's awesome. That is cool because I think my icon is. Oh no, that's for Disney. I'm Maleficent. <laughs> I wonder. What my, I can't remember what my icon is for Netflix. Oh yeah, I'm that little thing. From, um, oh, I can't remember. I forgot his name, but from the Dragon Prince, I'm that little toad. Anyways, I love those icons that you get to pick for <laughs> stuff like that, but. Anyways, cool stuff. Yes. So um, also, if you are interested in meeting more people from the Grishaverse and talking about the show, talking about the books, we met Alex through Discord, which is an amazing, amazing app. It's, um, it's built for gaming, but they have a whole place per, like for the Grishaverse. So... If you would like to become a member, all you have to do is put a little trip on over to our website, grishacast.com, which is fun, and we're going to be doing a lot <laughs> of cool stuff. It's going to be changing soon. But anyways, go there, um, scroll down to links from the show, and it'll be right there. I I, I know it did say Grisha Watch, so if it does say that, click that. But if it doesn't, then... Um, yeah, look for it should say Discord and it'll let you right on in there. And you can talk to you can just there's a lot of stuff there. So ways to meet fans. So now we are at the part of our listener thank yous. So first we wanna shout out to all of those in our Fable Book Club. Shout thank out. you all. We love you guys. We're just getting started. And then um also from Instagram, Anna underscore w underscore 42 i love that i inspired anna can you believe that me (laughs) out of all i'm just a crazy person so i had to have a phone case that was covered in all my favorite magical worlds well anna was like you know what i want that too so anna did and i just anyways anna let me know that I inspired her and also that she loved the show too. Thank you. But I mean, I'm just, I'm amazed that I can inspire people. Me, Lord, I'm just a ridden with anxiety all the time. I wouldn't be anyways, but, um, yeah, so that's our show. Um, thank you so much for tuning in, especially since we had no clue what we were doing the whole time, but at least now we've got a rundown of how these are going to go. A little I think bit. it went well. Yeah, absolutely. And, We'll have some games and some different things. And um, so I do believe that Discord will be having a, I guess they're watch. Oh, sorry. Yeah, they, the watch party is over. But anyways, if you would like to, maybe if you just heard this and listen to it, but are interested in 
watching the YouTube video of it with some fans, Discord is having a watch party tomorrow. So we'll click on in there and find out more about that. Um, we just like to all support one another and have fun. So next week, we'll be covering what? Episode two. Dos. Yup. So anyways, we love you all. And we'll see you later. <laughs> Woohoo! Like, we're at the end of the hour, so my voice is a little husky. It was. No mourners. No funerals. This has been GrishaCast. Connect with us on the web at GrishaCast.com. Send an email to info at GrishaCast.com. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and Patreon at GrishaCast. A very, very special thank you to our GrishaCast staff, Chris, Alex, Sid, and Amber. <laughs>